Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything Podcast. Chris, I want to jump into FoxSports.com and Fox Sports Digital. They had massive layoffs this week, including one of our favorite reporters, Stuart Mando. Now, we love the Audible podcast with him and Bruce Feldman. Uh, that means it, over the last few months, Bleacher Report, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, and now Fox have all gotten rid of great sports writers and, you know, in an effort to move away from written content. So as of Wednesday, there was no written content at FoxSports.com. Like the whole site is nothing but videos. Did you check it out? I went to it uh, yesterday. It is, it's scary. It is frightening. Uh, so awfulannouncing.com has a story up about Jamie Horowitz, who joined Fox from ESPN. He was the one that created the whole idea of like debate shows and everything else. Um, he decided he would build the Fox Sports Digital Department kind of the same way that he's doing all this other stuff. So basically Horowitz had a meeting with the best writers and editors for the website, and this was after their most successful year. Like, they started getting clicks, like they had good content, everything was rolling along, and he told them basically that they're all worthless. Like, and that the site will no longer be focused on promoting, or, well, now it's going to be focused on, like, A-list personalities, Skip Bayless, Colin Cowherd, etc., all the guys that are on their debate shows. So instead of articles like 11 coaches that should be on Oregon shortlist, the articles were turned into Cowherd's 11 coaches that should be on. Of course, like, again, there's no written content on the page now. That's what it was starting to turn into. And then he just said, you know, screw it. So he sent out a letter before the layoffs. And Awful Announcing picked it up. It says, team, today we are announcing a plan to put the editorial strength and technical infrastructure of Fox Sports fully behind digital video. We'll be shifting our resources and business model away from written content and instead focus on our fans' growing appetite for premium video across all platforms. When he says our fans' growing appetite, that means advertisers. That's all that means. Uh, He gets into that, though. Yeah. This evolution in our digital strategy is the decision driven by comprehensive research, data, sales numbers, and hours of conversations we've had this year. Our findings can be boiled down to these three core tenets. We are watching how fans consume content. Gone are the days of uploading content to a hub and hoping an audience seeks it out. We will be taking a proactive approach to distributing our content to sports fans on their preferred platforms. Now, by preferred platform, I'm guessing he's talking YouTube and Facebook and whatever. Second, we are listening to our advertising partners. Our advertising partners want to be presented alongside premium video across all screens, so we will now focus on delivering high-quality sports video content to support their efforts. Third, premium video is our advantage. Creating compelling sports video content is what we do best at Fox Sports. We are going to be focused on leveraging our live event rights, talent, and resources to create premium sports video content optimized for each platform. This evolution of our digital offerings is a continuation of what has always made Fox Sports successful. Big events and incisive opinions. Producing compelling sports video is the connective tissue that links our first NFC season in 1994 to our current World Cup partnership that extends through 2026. It's what links Fox NFL Sunday to daily opinion shows on FS1. Our strategy will be successful because it builds on and enhances everything Fox Sports has created over the past 23 years. I'm excited to see what we can do together. Thank you for your continued hard work as our business evolves. Jamie. Now... Give me your give me your thoughts on this first, and then I'm I'm gonna get into some more stuff that, yeah. I, I, okay, I think this guy's a tool, but <laughs> we're we're about to get rid of all you writers. But thanks thanks for we're gonna do this together though. We're gonna get rid of you together. Oh, yeah. We're so because we need your efforts for nothing anymore. But <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that I don't think he's wrong if his objective is to. Own if it's media, to make money. Own a media company that is profitable for their shareholders, I will tell you that the video world is where it is. It's much, much better than anything written right now. It just is. His advertisers have the information. They absolutely have the right information. Yeah. They know what they're talking about. These guys are paid to know 
what drives content. Yeah. And videos is what's going to do it. We just live in a video world these days. And that's I it. I mean, think about how many times people sit and watch YouTube videos. That's, that's what I was about to say. Like, and they finally found a way to monetize that through ads. And if you don't want to watch ads, you can pay you, 10 bucks a month. You pay for it. I'm, and, and, and guess what? You get to pay, you get to charge a lot more for a video ad mm-hmm. than you do for just a little ad link. With what, a it's, why, it. it's why TV ads cost so much more money than like radio ads. That's right. And radio ads cost so much more money than internet ads. Like new, yeah, newspaper ads or inter- yeah. internet ads. Absolutely. So it, if your objective for your company is to make the most money you can for your company, A, you can do this with far less people. This is what our... Well, not not far less to. people. So they they laid off like over a little over twenty people. Immediately replaced the positions with video editors. All right, let me let me explain what I think is different here, and I might be wrong. I am totally just guessing. I'm going to bet the writers that they're hiring are a to be a writer at that level. You have to be well established, and they're probably decently compensated. I'm going to bet for video editors. They could scour the country and find a lot full of twenty three year olds that are yep. fine making thirty, forty grand a year and you leasing me an apartment in a big city. Yep. And guess what? Their salary budget went to the floor. Yep, exactly. Because that writer, not only do I have to pay that writer's salary, but in order for them to cover events, I have to pay for them to go to the Super Bowl, go to this, go to that. Yeah. Now we're not paying anybody to go to anything. We're like we're paying some of the ads. yeah, we're we're paying you know a few a of the few best people. videographers. That's right. To go and and handle our A list. But talent. they already have rights to all of the video for all this stuff. Yeah. So now you're just paying somebody to sit at the house or sit in a van and and scroll through video, click it, click it, edit it, get it uploaded. Yeah. And then. You make sure you have somebody like Skip or Colin on Facebook Live or Periscope and get out there and say, check out this video. This is my opinion on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that. Now, that, now that, it bothers it, me because I'm a writer and I, yeah. I enjoy that. No, and, and I completely you know? agree. Now, when we're talking about where society is going... And, and things of that nature. Well, let's, uh, before we jump into that, here, let's let's go through a little bit of the rest of this, all right? So the reaction from staffers at Fox, right, after the first meeting with Horowitz was basically universal. Like, these are just some of the quotes. I don't know how my ears didn't bleed during the presentation. Everyone who saw the presentation was devastated, absolutely devastated. Uh, I knew I didn't have a job going forward. I just wish he waited closer to the end of people's contracts or the planned layoffs to tell us we're all worthless. The last six months have been miserable. Uh, let's see. He put, uh, he put up examples of content that he said didn't work for Fox anymore. The writers of that content were in the room and a lot of the examples he showed performed really well. It was more than apparent that Jamie didn't know what he was doing on the digital side. It was degrading. It was surreal. We were crushed. Uh, let's see. I don't think it was done out of malice. When Jamie presents, he thinks he's Don Draper and everyone just thinks he's a genius. He's not Don Draper though. And we joke that he's Donald Trump. He's totally oblivious. Let's see. Let's do one more. Uh, oh, nobody embraced his vision because it's <laughs> nobody embraced his vision because it's effing stupid. Anybody other than his lackeys can tell you that everything we had built and accomplished was getting thrown away for this effing guy. Like that's, yeah, that makes sense. Now, but I, that's that's all writers saying that, right? And I get where they're coming from, and I get why they're. Well, it's because they've spent their entire lives working on this yes. form of of media. But if that's becoming outdated, then you've got to adapt or die. I've got an idea of why the site is moving this way. Like, aside from just advertisers and whatnot, do you know who Sherilyn, what is it, Aguiar is? Yeah, that's the chick from YouTube. From YouTube that jumped over to Fox. So she's the vice president of strategy and content for Fox Sports National Networks. So she joined Fox in in late 2015. She was YouTube's uh, entertainment content partnership whatever. Like, she has the idea of what's going on. Advertisers don't care about written content. No. They want ads on video. And it, it's it's a sign that, you know, just doing print is not going to work anymore. Stuart Mandel lost his job because he's only a writer and podcaster. And in a lot of, I mean, some people like him a lot. His voice does kind of bother me a little bit. I will admit that. He's not like, it doesn't translate well. 
How's that? But I love his podcast because he's so knowledgeable. And, I mean, they had a ton of listeners, just a ton. Feldman kept his job at Fox Sports because of his willingness to, to learn to be like a sideline reporter. That's His contract ended in April. He got picked up because he's going to be doing sideline work. Now, he's still going to write. You know what he's doing now? He's reporting stories on his Facebook. That's good. That's awesome. I mean, it's yeah. It's I mean, it's free content. You don't have to go to Fox Sports. It's right there where you can find it. But, but somebody it, can pick that up. Somebody will see his writing and pick it up and give him a job, or just give him credit for it because oh, he's yeah. already got a job. That's right. You know, like I don't know that his I don't know what his competitive clause is in it. Like if he's got a no compete or non compete, whatever. Um, but it just shows like you got to have abilities in other areas besides writing if you're going to be successful in today's age of sports media. Adapt, like there's radio and or die, man. yeah, you radio and podcasting, TV, online video, like all anything that's visual or audible is where it's at right now. Like it doesn't matter if you can break stories. Gary Parish and Clay Travis are proof of how well rounded you have to be. Right? They're both print guys. They both started in, you know doing newspapers or writing online or whatever. They worked their way into radio and then television. Clay's got an online TV show on Periscope and Facebook Live along with his national morning show, radio, on Fox Sports. Yeah. Gary Parrish has a local daily radio show in Memphis. He does sideline reporting and studio work for CBS Sports Network. He's talked about this before because he, like, it started out that he was the national college basketball writer for CBS. That's right. And now he does, you know, a lot of the studio stuff, and he does several, several games every year where he's a sideline reporter. His CBS Sports Network TV contract pays like 70% of his salary now from there. Oh, absolutely. It is TV insane. TV money is crazy. Yeah, TV money is nuts. No. So it, and does such a small portion of his actual work doing that. Yeah. The grind of doing a radio show three hours a day every oh, day, it's insane. Monday to Friday, he, may, he makes very little off of that. But I mean, he he's still he audience. makes he makes pretty good money, but he has built a really big audience. That's, I was gonna say, but it, 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 that helps get you the TV deal. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, all right. Now tell me this: Has the internet and streaming capabilities kind of taken away from everyone's willingness to read stories? Like, is it is it good or bad? I guess for the future of sports media, if if nobody is reading anymore, I don't know that it's a sports media thing. I I think it's a societal thing and. I, if nobody's reading anymore, I think it's bad. Okay, I, yeah. I'll tell you this: I grew up not a good reader, not enjoying reading at all. Well, everybody said that that newspapers were outdated because everybody could get their news online. Mm -hmm. But they were still reading news. Online. But they were still reading news online. Now, it's if you you know because I had time to like, especially like at work mm -hmm. when I've got a little bit of downtime, I can't have a bunch of stuff going on at my job. Right, I like I'll toss something on in the background while I'm actually working, but I can't listen like to breaking news all the time. Yep. Now, for a breaking news story like tw like Twitter's the best. I love Twitter because I can immediately check it and see what's going on, and you see trending topics, all that kind of stuff. Like it's perfect. But I could read stories and get the gist of it pretty quickly. Now, like you have to go find the video. Watch the, you know, I, I just, I worry about society and our lack of caring about, you know, there's always going to be a place for books and all that, but man, like, obviously I'm a little bit biased. No, but I don't, I, I don't think it's a good thing that people aren't reading. Yeah. Like the older I've gotten, the more I've enjoyed reading. Yeah. And, and I kind of went through a phase where I kind of had to make myself, I guess I did. I made myself do it because I, w I wanted to better myself. And so I began reading things that I normally wouldn't have read. And then now it's, it's something that I, I just wedge out time for well, to do. When you, when you have a written story, you can get so many facts in. And, and when I a worry... a good writer, you can get lost in a story. Yes. A great storyteller. Can like Dan be, Wetzel can and Pat be, Forty? Can be... Any video you've got. Yahoo Sports is the king right now of written content. Well, and they're also the king, and they've been this for a long time, of actual journalism, of yeah. breaking stories, of doing investigative work. What's the guy's name that, that broke all the NCAA stories that made the NCAA completely change the way they went about it? 
what was it? It was Charles. Is it Charles Robinson? Does that yeah, sound right? I, I have no. I think that he broke the Miami story. Like he, I mean, he did a bunch of this stuff, and the NCAA screwed those things up so bad that they couldn't even dole out punishment for it. Yeah. And now, like the NCAA completely changed how their enforcement Cause staff operates because they were exposed. Yeah. And. You know, and you obviously haven't heard much from Charles recently because, like, the NCAA gets in and gets it taken care of before he can get to it. But, yeah, I mean, it's it, Yahoo is, is where it's at. Dan Wetzel is a great writer. Stuart Mandel's a great writer. Um, it's all these older guys that have just, they've been writing forever. They've got all the contacts. They give you all of this information. And... You know, I mean, there's a guy down at the uh, the New Orleans Advocate, Ron Higgins, who was a sports editor here at the Commercial Appeal for a while. Great storyteller. He can write, you know, with the best of them. But you get him on the radio, and, like, he's good, he's knowledgeable, but it's not the same. You know? like it, it, they, He's they comfortable don't, writing. Yes. Because you can fit everything in, and if you miss something, you can go back and put it in, and whatever. If you're doing live video or just any kind of video, if it's not written out beforehand, That's right. I mean, you got problems. You've, you've got to be able to be flexible. You've got to be able to bounce in and out of topic. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot more to it. And, and you're not going to get those things without reps. But he, he wasn't a good writer until he got reps. Yeah. I mean, it's the exact same way. You've got to write all the time to get good at it. You can't just wake yep. up and say, I think I'm going to be a writer today and start writing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to read a lot. you got to learn from other people. Yeah, I mean, I I went to school for journalism, and it took me a while to get back into the habit once we started this website. I'm very curious to see how it does. I think, I think for Fox, I actually think it's going to do well. I, I'm curious. I'm and I, still, I, think, I don't know if it will or not. I'm I not also sure. think Fox brought this lady in from YouTube because they want it to go in this direction. I don't think they brought her in and she convinced them to go. I think you don't make a hire like that unless that's what you want to do. It's the same thing if you're building a football program. You don't bring Chip Kelly in if you want to run the power eye. Yeah. That, you know, you you know what you're getting when you bring this guy in. Exactly. And so I, I absolutely, I don't think that she got into Fox and she infiltrated this and began to change how they do business. I think she was brought in to do a job. And I bet it's going to be really good because they have resources and access to to technology and video equipment and video editing equipment that nobody else has. Yeah, I mean you. I mean, video is is what they when do. When you're when you're ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, those four are the big media TV market. They've got technology that nobody else gets access to. That's true. So they're going to be able to do this and do it well if they hire the right people. So will it work for them? Yeah, and I bet they make a lot more money because their costs, I think, are going to be substantially lower. I think you might be right. Uh, and, and we'll just, you know. We'll see. It, it, it's going to take time. Yeah, it, it, and a lot of the criticisms from some of these people that were watching this or are involved in this layoff was is we were profitable last year. Last year was our most successful year. Why are they changing it? Yeah, but it, it took you five years to get to it. Well, and that's it. it you don't ever change something when you're in the cellar. As soon as you see the market changing, you have to begin to change. And it exactly. doesn't matter if you made the most money last year or not. You immediately begin adapting as soon as you see the market changing. And they're the first to do it. It's, yeah. How much could this maybe have saved ESPN had they started doing this two years ago? I, I mean, you may be right. Because they have access to all the video rights already. You're already paying out money for all of these rights anyway. True. So... I, and I don't know. This is a market that I don't know a whole lot about. And so how's it going to work? But I'll tell you this. If the advertisers are telling you to do it, they can tell you what's getting clicks and what's not. Because this is the business that they are in. Yeah, they're, they're paying and they attention. also know what they can sell this for. Oh, you, you've got a, you know, a picture with a, you know, some, some advertising next to an article? Great. Oh, you're actually going to play a video? All right. Well, 30 seconds before that video starts, they're going to have to watch this commercial. Yep. And now I can sell that commercial for a thousand times more than I could sell that link. That's true. That's true. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. 
there are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at Gary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, Download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.